Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to take a closer look as to how long it takes for a signal to travel from the SV down to the receiver. That, of course, depends where the receiver is and where the satellites are. But we can do a rough modeling of the situation. The orbit of the SVs is such that they take two trips around the Earth in just less than two or 24 hours, about 23 hours and 56 minutes or so. And because of that, they need to have an altitude of about 20,194 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Now, the eccentricity can be as much as 0 0.02, so of course that varies a little bit. And then we can take the radius of the Earth at 6,371 kilometers, of course, that varies as well, depending upon where on the Earth we are. But again, this is a rough modeling. So let's say that an SV is directly overhead. That means that the distance between the SV and the receiver would be about 20,194 kilometers. Converted to feet, that's about 66 million feet. Now we know that light travels one foot per, per nanosecond or about 30 centimeters per nanosecond. So however many feet we have, that's the number of nanoseconds it takes to travel that distance. So therefore it takes about 66 million nanoseconds or about 66 milliseconds if the SV is directly overhead. Now, if the SV is at the horizon, again, we do a rough modeling because uh, the distance from here to here would be actually a little bit less than 20,194 kilometers because it's actually on an orbit like this. So we should take this distance is not quite this distance. But again, we do a rough modeling of that. We then add to that the radius of the Earth. The total distance would then be 26,565 kilometers. That means 87 million feet, or it would take 87 milliseconds for the signal to travel from here to here. Actually, it will be probably a little bit less, more like 85 or so milliseconds because of the position of the satellite. And then, of course, we realize that we really don't pick up satellites that are at the horizon. We pick up satellites that are at least about 5 or 10 degrees above the horizon. And more typically, even further up on the horizon, we can say that the average or typical transit time for a signal between the SVs and the receivers is about 70 milliseconds. So, if the clocks were perfect and the clock on the receiver was exactly the same as the clock on the SV, then we can calculate the distance between the two, which of course would be the distance from the SV to the receiver. That would be the speed of light times the difference between the time of the receiver and the time of the SV. So if somehow we can calculate what the time of the send was from the SV and we subtract from that the time of the receiver, or vice versa, we take the current time of the receiver, subtract the time that the SV was at when it sent the signal, which of course is in the past. We take that difference, we would expect to find a difference about 70 milliseconds. We multiply times the speed of light, and we get the distance to the receiver. That would be easy if we could do that. The problem, of course, is that they're not the same. We have to have some sort of correction factor, so that means we have to add that time for the correction. And that means that our simplified equation will look something like this. Now, what is included in that correction? Well, there's a lot of different things included. We have the clock drift, the clock offsets, the, on the ionospheric correction, the tropospheric correction, the relativistic correction, the multipath delays, the receiver noise, SV pad delays, and there's several more. So there's a whole slew of things we need to account for, some more important than others, and we will show you in the next so many videos what those things are and how to compensate for them. So yes, if it wasn't for the fact that the two clocks are not the same, or did I say that right? If, if, if the two clocks were the same, the equation would be easy. It would be an easy calculation to figure out the distance to the various receivers. And then it would be easy to figure out where exactly on Earth the receiver is. But because there's so many variants onto the, onto the delta time, the difference in the time between when the receiver sends it to us and when we receive it, because of all these other corrections we have to deal with, because of that, we have to have four satellites and we have to take that into account in order to figure out exactly, or at least to a precise amount, where we are on the Earth. And we'll show you the details of how to do that. So that's why it takes about 70 milliseconds for the signal to get here. But of course, there will be all kinds of variations which we'll look into in the next videos to come. 